Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First step, man sentenced to at least five years for carjackings. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. What's going on right now at Lovering Global Cars? For the first time ever, we have three SUVs in our model lineup that are sure to meet all your needs. From the classic seven-passenger Volvo XC90 to the mid-size sporty and sleek. 23-year-old Anthony Floyd had nothing to say other than to acknowledge he was the one responsible for a series of crimes that started in Manchester back on December 26th of 2017. I cannot sleep, and all I can picture in my head is the face of Mr. Plord running around the corner, jumping into my car, and racing away. Reading a statement from victim Doreen Betts, the victim's advocate described the impact of Plord's actions. Betts had her car stolen just after 9 a.m. as she was getting ready to leave for the day. In her statement, Betts said that Ford took more than her car, he took her independence. Having gone through a year of cancer-related issues, I now have to depend on others to get me to appointments. Ford would end up totaling the car by crashing into a building. Then he went and carjacked another car, forcing a mother and her 12-year-old daughter out of the vehicle as they waited for a prescription in the pharmacy parking lot. The defendant walked up to the driver's side door, opened the door and yelled at her to get out. He hit her with his right shoulder while trying to remove her from her vehicle. Floyd then sped off. He admitted he sideswiped a couple of cars in Gary on his way to Hudson, where he would end up crashing in a snowbank. He wound up in the hospital. He was taken into the Southern New Hampshire hospital due to uh, delusional thoughts, appeared to be under the influence of methamphetamine. Florida has agreed to plead guilty to crimes in Gary and Hudson as well, but according to the plea bargain, his sentence will be concurrent with the five to ten years he was sentenced to this morning. Reporting live in Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Attorney accused of conspiracy to smuggle drugs to inmates. Two women including an attorney, have pleaded not guilty to charges that they conspire to smuggle drugs to inmates at the Plymouth County House of Corrections, the district attorney announced. Eline Gordon, 42, of Bridgewater, pleaded not guilty Thursday morning. Plymouth County District Attorney Timothy J. Cruz's office said, she is accused of using her attorney privileges to meet with an inmate who is not her client. Gordon faces charges including possession with intent to distribute and conspiracy to violate drug laws. Minnesko below. 19 of Rosendale turned herself in at the Plymouth District Court Thursday and also pleaded not guilty. She has a relative housed in the Plymouth County House of Corrections, the DA's office said. She is charged with conspiracy to violate drug laws in being in a source before the fact. Cruz's office said the two arrests follow a month-long investigation into the smuggling of drugs at courthouses and the House of Corrections. Gordon is scheduled to return to court on June 11th and Below is scheduled for a hearing on June 19th. Q 
he was my world. Corporal Cole's wife speaks with WMTW about husband's death moving forward. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8 Main. I'm Stan from Frank 107.5. And I'm Holly, and there's over $100,000 in this vault with your name on it. Listen weekday mornings for your chance to win cash with Frank's $1,000 Minutes. The Bank of Frank is open. Frank 107.5. Wife of Corporal Cole is speaking exclusively with WMTW News 8 about her husband and her life now two weeks after Deputy Cole was killed. Cheryl Cole and I have been talking for about a week now, and she wants to thank everybody for their... ...for their... Everybody watching, she said, the innocent line off this state had ever seen. I told, I told you I was, I said to him, tells me quote out. And today, and she tells me quote after the funeral, I said to him, I told you, I told you I was going to go all out for this. I was. I told you you were going to have the biggest and best send off this state had ever seen. You see, in his line of work, it was never promised that he would be coming home at the end of every shift, and we talked a lot about it. As for her message to everybody watching, she says a tremendous thank you. I sincerely intended to thank each and every person individually, but I'm beginning to realize that may take years. Your support and caring truly helped us through this horrendous time and it is greatly and deeply appreciated. Cheryl also tells me Corporal Cole was cremated and the family is now working to put up a headstone somewhere so they and others can pay their respects in person. I'll have more in our conversation starting this afternoon, first at four. Okay, and there you go on some of that story. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market and see how your U.S stock market closed for this Thursday evening. And here's a look at the market right now. The Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the green and went up. Your NASDAQ closed in the green and went up. S&P 500 closed in the green and went up. CNBC IQ 100 closed in the green and went up. Gold closed in the green and went up. Oil closed in the green and went up. U.S. 10-year closed in the red and went down. Euro slash USD closed in the green and went up. And VIX closed in the red and went down. Dow rallies nearly 200 points, notches 6-day winning streak. The Dow Industrial Average rose sharply on Thursday, posting its sixth straight day of gains following the release of weaker-than-expected U.S. inflation data. Volcano Observatory warns of further explosion eruptions in Hawaii. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. Laser tech. Now, growing concerns about the volcano emergency in Hawaii. Geologists warning more explosion, more explosive eruption could be coming, sending boulders and ash flying to an area that's already so devastated. ABC's Kana Whitworth has the latest. This morning, we're getting a closer look at some of the homes in the path of the Kilauea volcano eruption, where lava has poured into the streets for the past week, scorching houses and yards like this one. Over a 
a dozen fissures have emerged over the last few days, and on Wednesday, an explosive eruption sending a torrent of ash into the sky. Our Marcy Gonzalez was there. Oh my goodness, that is just remarkable. In recent years, the volcano has been sending lava into hard-to-reach areas along the coastline. But in the last week, more than 15 vents have burst open, releasing lava, gas, and steam inside residential neighborhoods. This right here is the biggest lava flow in Lilani Estates. This is the one that continued on for about a half mile. And as you fly over it, you can see it has taken down power poles and changed the entire landscape of this neighborhood. Underneath some 15 feet of lava rock is homes and cars. There is no sign of how far the lava will spread or when the eruption will stop. Police are now going door to door to evacuate residents near two new volcanic vents. We hope that within, you know, weeks, a month maybe, that we'll be back in here. And all of that toxic volcanic gas spreading for more than 60 miles. It's posing potentially deadly risk to everyone in the evacuation zone, especially to the elderly and those with breathing problems. It's really thick. It just makes your eyes water, your throat hurts, um, everything hurts. So in your lungs literally thick. So you gotta just run. Geologists are very concerned that Kilauea could erupt violently in the coming days. They say that this happens when the lava lake drops low enough to react with the groundwater. It could throw boulders out the size of cars. Michael? All right, thank you so much, Kane. I'm sure new, that's news no one wants to hear. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday night, and I'll see you back here tomorrow with another newscast. And I'll have a news report later on this evening. Good night, everyone. Bye.